Okay, here's a uh, short little video on a Drake receiver. Taking a quick look at this, you might think it's a 2A or a 2B, but it's a 2A, the predecessor. Um, and really, there's not much difference. The only difference is uh, the selectivity positions available on the uh, 2B. They have a uh, 500 hertz CW position and the 2A does not have that. But anyway, it's a pretty nice receiver. Triple conversion made in 1960 um, in Miamisburg, Ohio. I don't know if this is going to come out or not. I hope so. Anyway, we'll tune around with it real quick. Let me adjust the lighting in the studio here. I don't know if that's going to make any difference. One of these days I'm going to figure out how to use this camera. <laughs> anyway, the basic idea of the 2A and the 2B is 80 meter band is used as a um, variable IF and all the other bands use converters um, to get down to that uh, 80 meter frequency. It's very stable. I'm listening on 80 meters right now and I'm in the 2.4 kilohertz or sideband position. I got the product detector and the BFO on. And I'm not hearing anybody. Why is that? <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I had the other radio on, and this volume was turned down. That's why. So let's tune around a little bit here on 80 meters. That's a 2.4 kilohertz position. And that's the AM position. Band here and see if we can find an AM or okay. We'll go to diode detect. Got lots of audio. You can sort your way nice clean sound in the uh, and, and access to information and, I replaced and the multi section the power supply yourself. filter, a couple other caps, um, three resistors, uh, you can buy, and, I think it's the and no tubes. So no tubes you required. You can buy the factory uh, scanner. Okay, so that's so. Uh, 80 meter band. Go back to side band. And on the 80 meter band, lower side band is SB2. Some kind of a net. Let's go to 40 meters. On 40 meters, we use this scale, and SB1 is low. So what we're doing here is we're shifting the BFO frequency from 47 kilohertz up to and through 53 kilohertz to cover both sidebands in the final 50 kilohertz IF. 
So depending on how things get mixed together determines which sideband ends up being number one and which ends up being number two for a given position of the band switch. Okay, so anyway, let's, uh, while we're down here, let's listen to a little CW. You can shift, uh, like I say, the BFO through the pass band like that and get some degree of selectivity. But here's where the 2B really takes over um, as a huge improvement over the 2A, in my opinion. But still, very usable, very usable uh, on either CW sideband or AM. And, you know, very... Uh, very nice receiver, especially for 1960. Okay, let's listen to some sideband now. So on 40 meters, sideband number one is lower. We'll go up the band here and see if we can catch anybody on. Nets everywhere. Okay, I think I heard first. Zero uh, November four was it uh, Sierra November India? Okay, so uh, uh, back back to move. Uh, K four G Y and it's okay, so yeah. All right, uh, K four Y B. And I copy to find uh, Cactus on the. Let's uh, go up and listen to some commercial shortwave AM here. BCQ should be on. Little Moody Blues. Pretty cool old stuff, you gotta admit. And it works very, very well. So anyway, that's the Drake 2A. Very similar to the 2B. This thing cost 270 bucks in 1960. And uh, you do the conversion for inflation and cost of living and all that stuff. That's 2300 bucks. Uh, in today's dollars. So this was uh, this was not a uh, inexpensive receiver at the time, that's for sure. Anyway, that's the Drake 2A. Hope you liked it. We got another one coming up in a in a while. Probably be a, a TR4 CW with RIT. So that'll be a fun one. Anyway, this one's good to go. Keep tinkering.